Hi, I'm Michael Gilbert, CEO and founder of Semios, a precision farming platform for permanent and specialty crops. We have over 2 million sensors deployed on farms and reporting every 10 minutes into our database, which then run through our artificial intelligence or AI modules. Today's topic is why AI is the essential implement for finding the needle in the haystack. Now let's get started. Farms are complex biosystems made up of billions of individual plants and trillions of other organisms, all of which are at the whim of their microclimate conditions, which changes year to year. Managing the type, the timing, the amount, and the location of chemical inputs is a constant battle for growers. In addition, farmers are trying to meet the demands of consumers, distributors, regulators, and the ecosystem all with decreasing availability of labor, water, and chemicals. The complexity of their decisions is now compounded as regulators in the EU are demanding a 50% decrease in pesticide use, while consumers want increasingly higher quality foods. Data-driven decisions is the only feasible approach to optimize for these competing demands. And when it comes to decisions in complex systems, big data and AI are essential. Heat and water are two of the most important microclimate driving forces, both for beneficial and harmful organisms on a farm. Every hour of exposure to heat, which is measured in degrees, and water, which is measured in percentage of humidity or soil percentage, impacts the rates of chemical reactions and thus living processes. As such, they form the ground truth of all farming decisions. Our target crops, orchards and vineyards, experience significant microclimate data variability, both in space and time. So space, which we call spatial granularity, refers to the density of observations that make up your understanding of what is going on across a farm. For example, here is a 50-acre fruit farm with over 300 semiol sensors, of which we are now showing only the temperature readings. You can clearly see a gradient of microclimate conditions up to a 7 degree difference, which means risks vary across the orchard. This is not a one-size-fits-all scenario. Similarly, looking at humidity, you can see a similar gradient. So across this 50-acre orchard, we can see a difference in relative humidity of up to 20% at one given time. Again, not a one-size-fits-all scenario. And beyond spatial, we can also look at temporally granular data, which means conditions over time, which are also critical. As every biological process occurs as a result of exposure to heat and water over time. So the number of minutes or hours of exposure are critical to understanding risk. So here's an example of humidity conditions changing over a 15 hour period. When we start at midnight, you can see the gradient goes from about the low 70s to 80, as we go into the morning, so at 3 a.m., the humidity increases to now mid-80s, and then right before the sun rises, it peaks at just so between 80 and 90 percent humidity, and then once the sun rises, and we move over to about 820, it drops down again. So now it's in the 60s to low 70s. By mid-morning, it's now in the mid-50s to 60s. After lunch, we're now in the high 40s. And then by mid-afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're down to the low 40s. So you can see how understanding how long a process has been exposed to, say, humidity of 60 to 70 percent requires temporally granular data to understand. Now, in addition to these ground-truthing microclimate data, we can add complementary data sets. And there are many of them available, some that we collect and some that our customers collect, which we then combined. So here's an example of a data set we collect. It's pest count data. So we have traps in the field that record the level of insect activity on a daily basis. So on the left side, you can see these are the trap counts for a given day, and you can see the locations of where the insects were caught. And then the customer can quickly switch gears and see how many insects they caught over the entire season on that same location. And you can start seeing trends as to where these insects tend to collect, and this is often then correlated back to the ground-truthing 
data of water and heat over time and space. But one of the things that is a common sore point with growers is it's all too much data. We've heard it over and over again, data overload. Way too complicated, and for growers, it's difficult to find a return on their investment, or ROI. This explains why so many great innovations in ag have not seen the level of adoption expected. Yet at Semios, with our granular data, we've been doubling our sales every year we enter the market, and we now manage over a billion dollars of crops. And that's all thanks to the combination of granular data and artificial intelligence. And now let me walk you through some of the examples of how we do that. So we start with, on the left side, our ground truth data, so water and heat across space and time across all our farms. We then combine this with other data sets, which I've listed here, pest count, scouting, irrigation, soil moisture, and imagery, and these are all run through our machine learning and AI pipeline to deliver site-specific ag insights to our customers, such as spray guidelines or prescriptive irrigation. And I'll walk you through some specifics about how we do that. So here's an example of pest counts, or insect counts, over time. And in this case, we're representing time on the x-axis as degree days. Next, we would look at um, a different season. So that was a previous season. The next season, we can overlay them. And as you can see, you can normalize these pest counts using degree days that are collected right from the farm. And there are always like, differences year to year, which will explain also why you tend to have a lot of variability when you use non-AI decision making. Now currently, what happens in industry is they take some of these data sets and they apply them to predictive models that are standardized for and generalized for all growers. And although helpful, when you base your spray timing, which is the green bars, uh, you will have often limited success as most growers do not fit into that average. So taking our granular data and applying that to these models, we actually create new models which are site specific. And these curves of insect activity will differ from what you'd expect from a generalized model. And as such, we can then create optimized spray timings, which often vary significantly from what they would get from a generalized model. And then using our spray timing now, which is more correlated to the actual insect activity, you actually manage to get better results with less chemical inputs. And because this is built through a pipeline of machine learning and AI, we can actually create site-specific models on every farm you manage based on their own data. So what you get is, for even for a given season, even and the, the generalized weather conditions on the area are the same, the site-specific data leads to different spray timing recommendations on every a single farm. Switching gears to water management on farms. With an impending water scarcity crisis on the horizon and water conservation efforts, we can expect tighter water restrictions going forward. Thankfully, over the last few decades, there have been many great innovations in water management technologies, such as soil moisture sensing and irrigation system monitoring. Yet, we've seen limited adoption at scale. We believe the biggest problem is the point sources are limited and there's a lack of granularity to fill in the gaps. So we introduced evapotranspiration at a granular level, both in space and time, to complete this offering. And when you combine these data sets into our machine learning and AI pipelines, we can deliver site-specific prescriptive irrigation plans. What this means is you can now optimize for tree stress with minimal water. And in doing so, the farmer sees a clear ROI and will increase their adoption rate of the combined technologies. Coming back to our original question, simply put, we believe that AI is absolutely essential to processing the large amounts of spatial and temporal ground truth in data sets, which in combination with the smaller data sets will drive the ROI for the grower. And this will unleash the potential for ag tech to optimize food production and meet the demands of consumers and regulators alike. Thank you for your attention and have a great conference.